And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Flash sales are coming back to Steam. Some people are upset. Question mark. Yeah, that's the thing. And Feral is writing another skin pack for Total War. Yay. Steam's usage is dropping. In other news, sky is falling, declares Small Bird. And on today's lesson on how to avoid DMC takedowns, perhaps don't host the assets of a game that you're rebuilding. Totally not Fortnite comes to Linux, and everyone is sitting here clutching their dangly bits, hoping it doesn't suck. Good. And uh, OpenMW uh, picks right back up where it left off. Not 44 is out with a promise of not 45 very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Axel, switching the bits in Athens, doing all this nightmare fuel under Linux, joined every week by a man up north. That's a Canadian right there. He's paying attention. It's great. It's awesome. In Toronto, one Jordan Sveng, and the man on the island right there in Britannia, by way of Portugal, Space Portugal, as we call it, Hello. one Pedro Mateus, and together with you Wait, at home. Wait, should start recording already? Fuck. Doing the thing. Uh, <laughs> that's everyone at home. They're awesome. Helping us form the last little bit. Known as Cocaine Voltron. Try to pick that up, YouTube. Die to fire. Um, <laughs> before we get started, would you like to see what's going on in each other's life organs? I'm going to start this off because there's a little bit of announcement. A couple things showed up. Uh, I talked about some stuff in the pre-pre-super shows, and, but our uh, encoder showed up packaged like Bolivian cocaine, allegedly. I have no idea what that would look like. <laughs> um, what does it smell like? I'll, t- I'll tell you after, after the show, babe. Um, <laughs> Man, there was a moment. I was like, oh, let's see what's in this thing, because it genuinely looked like a brick. Uh, I'll be plugging that in later this week, because I'm not going through the uh, spaghetti noodle nightmares of that. And that's too YOLO, because it was at the house when I got home today. That's brilliant. Looking forward to that later this week. Uh, Jordan, you've been playing in the Amazon. Yes. I, I was talking about the button. The the. <laughs> The very special button. You should check out uh, LGC minus LGC Pure Patreon. I'll, I'll, I go into quite some detail about the dangers of pressing buttons that people place. Uh, no, it's been it's been pretty boring for me. Uh, yeah, I started watching Glow. That's a pretty solid series on Netflix. Um, That's and, one with yeah. Mark Maron in it, right? Yeah, yeah. As, as like the sleazy like exploitation film producer. Right yeah, on. He's, he's he's good in that. Uh, yeah, that, that that's. I don't I don't know, Pedro. You're you're like. You're, you built like a laptop girlfriend or something. Yeah, I thought you were going to say he's built like a laptop girlfriend. And that's like, <laughs> oh, baby, sure. you built like a laptop girlfriend. My God. Well, uh, all I did was basically it's cut the, uh, like the Dremel to use, and I started hacking into the um, the little cage that the Xbox 360 has on the inside. That's the, uh, the um, power supply you can see there. Everything holds in place. Uh, surprisingly sturdy uh, nylon screws. I wasn't expecting them to be to be able to hold the uh, the power supply, which is like a kilo, and mm. it's a whole. It holds it re- relatively well. So, man, good on them. <laughs> hey, man, that's how, good. How's that, how's that smell like? Delicious. And we want to yes. welcome all the new people. We had a bunch of new subscribers. I'm guessing because of uh, Linus. No, not that one mm-hmm. that showed up. So, yeah, this this shows goes out to like. All, all of you and everyone the who's fans, been betrayed by oatmeal. But, uh, <laughs> Hello, first timers. It's <laughs> brilliant. Lock in. Hide your LGC cherry. Hide your Linux, parents. Linux, Linux game cherry. That's, that's that's what we're doing this week. Goodbye, first timers. Uh, I, I can't I can't say anything about popping uh, the horse's cherry, but uh, we we got we got a big old section. So let's get through it. It's the steam. Hang on. Do it again. <laughs> Steam Linux update. Oh, of the no. week. All right. Oh my God! It's the end <laughs> of the world. It's like that last episode of the ABC series Dinosaurs. The end of the world is a- upon us. It's time to save, save, save. No, uh, this is from PC Games and uh, links to all this in our show notes. Steam's user count has dropped. Um, I believe last year it was something like nine percent during the summer slump. This year it's seventeen percent. That's almost double. Everything's on and- fire, yo. Yeah, every, everything's on fire. Steam's going out of business, you guys. Linux gaming is dead, buried, no more of it whatsoever. No. Uh, so the, the, this, this is a lot of hand-wringing and speculation, but uh, the, the guy uh, t- attempts to sort of examine the uh, some of the reasons why Steam's numbers drop, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's a huge overabundance of games with a dearth of quality. People can't find the games that they're looking for. Um Player Unknowns, Battlegrounds, uh, Subnautica, Sea of Thieves, Fortnite, all of these things have been distributed outside of Steam. 
uh, normally, and that that probably has an impact on that as well. Uh, it, the article goes into a couple other um, thing or reasons why, and it makes sense for the most part. Um, there isn't really one particular dominant factor here, but it is really one data point on the graph. I'm curious what the overall trend is before we start, you know, tearing off our shirts and making cats and dogs live together. You know, oh yeah, man. I mean, definitely seems all far, far, far way away from dying but you know we are still kind of sitting back hoping steam does pull a summer maybe this is something i don't really think it is i kids uh pedro what do you think i don't think every studio releasing a client did you hear about uh what was it fortnite on yeah. google play yeah uh they well it's not coming to google play it's coming to the samsung uh, samsung um whatever Store. they call it because it's going to be a galaxy exclusive for a little bit i'm sure nvidia is a good idea <laughs> so yeah no the this uh it makes sense that fortnite not being distributed to steam and it being the most popular game out there right now that it will draw some people away uh but yeah as the article mentions uh there has uh, there has always been a bit of a slump during the summertime and that's easily explained by the fact that AAA uh, publishers don't usually release games during the summer. They usually wait until like September, late September to release something. So uh, I, I, yeah. I want to talk about that for a hot second, though, like making it making it Samsung exclusive. They're all Android tablets, right? Like what kind of bullshit future are we heading into where it's like, no, you don't have the right S ARM SOC. You can't play this game. Yeah, because of reasons. Yeah. Supposedly, it's going to be a timed exclusive, but yeah, it could be a timed exclusive. I mean, it's not the first time something. Like, I mean, when Netflix first launched, it was only going to work on one mobile until somebody got the mm -hmm. APK and removed the check, and now it works on everything. So yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Sweeney had an interesting Twitter post I think earlier today, where he said, "Oh, what, what are uh, everyone's upset because we're doing this, but we're doing it on an open platform. Android's all about being open." I was like, "Dude." You just you know, again to, to, oh, oh. Android's all about yeah. open your wallet, yeah. not open your <laughs> API or sources or anything. Any, anyways, uh, card games. Uh, yes. Yeah, so there, there, there's a there was a bit of a thing. It apparently is uh, coming in November. It's going to be about twenty bucks, uh, and it's going to support Linux from Genesis. There was a little Twitter about that earlier today, and now there's a. Ars Technica article talking about you know the the sort of economics around it, how like maybe card buying is going to work. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't. I'm considering that everything Valve has put out, aside from like Alien Swarm, has made it to Linux. This like the Linux support isn't a surprise. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm curious though. Um, are the like Steam trading cards and the artifact trading cards going to be like compatible or something new? Yeah. No, <laughs> no. I mean, people are already abusing the Steam trading cards as it is. You no, really no spoilers. No spoilers, bad. Pedro. No spoilers. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, they, they say that it's going to be uh, coming out for twenty bucks on release. So my question here is, how long until they pull a Dota and say, yeah, no, this is just free to play now? Just give uh, us money uh, with the in-game microtransactions uh, it depends on how much money they make off it off top but i gotta give valve a little bit of credit they didn't dick us around here They're, they didn't say oh it's releasing for pc mac and may maybe mm -hmm. there's like nah it's coming out Linux day one so i say good on that i mean I'll, I'll i'll try it i'm not gonna like it i don't like card games like that but pedro loves them and i do <laughs> he will get you a decent report on it so uh you were alluding to this and jordan's got a little bit about scam time yeah, so in the continuing quest to make to bring as much money out of Steam as humanly possible, uh, what people have been doing is they've been abusing the uh, one dollar or the hundred dollar registry. Man, could you imagine one dollar registry on Steam? That'd be, that'd just be ridiculous. <laughs> no, a hundred dollar registry to put up games to put in uh, trading cards and items. And what they do is they copy the actual game art and the game and like the text from the actual distributed cards. And they make something that is in effect indistinguishable from the original and they're trading them. And, you know, they're trading them for other cards that people are trading in good faith that ostensibly mm -hmm. are worth money. And that is enough for people to, you know, actually fall for it. And for these guys to make some money, um, steam has pushed out an update, but like, the, the whole the whole thing is kind of screwy, right? Because 100% this is illegal. You're stealing someone else's IP 
is the, that is at the very least copyright infringement. Mm-hmm. But these guys don't care, and I mean, if there's no reason why they would, uh, yeah. So I, 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 I don't know though. the the whole The whole item trading thing it's never been my bag. There are people who are like crazy into it. But. Yeah, and the items that they the so called developers were uh, duplicating were items that go for. Fourteen hundred, twelve hundred dollars on the Steam marketplace. It's like, why are you paying that much for that? For what is basically a thing for a game that most people don't even get to see. Yeah. Well, there, 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 there is a solution, albeit I have oh, yes. one. Yeah, and uh, Valve being Valve, they are. Uh, the, well, I didn't. Uh, immediately figure out why exactly instead of actually fixing the problem they introduced what is basically a sidestep so what they're doing now is they uh whenever you get a trade offer for one of these scammed items uh and it's for a game that's either new on steam or that you haven't played uh it'll give you a warning saying look this isn't the game that you think it is uh this is very new on steam or this is a game you haven't played at all so this is probably not the item you want. So it gives people that second chance. And they say that you have to provide double confirmation. So there's like two are you sure boxes that pop up, basically. That was Valve's quote unquote fix. Uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it, then it hit me why they didn't actually fix it because it's Valve. They own the freaking platform. They could curb this if they want to. And then I realized, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, they're making money off of these cam transactions. So, no. no. So, so, okay, go. <laughs> All right. All right. I was just going to say, it's it's only been a week so far, and Valve has been known to say, we're doing this, and then after the public outcry, oh, we're going to implement some other solutions. So I'm curious what the update on this story next week is going to be. That's mm-hmm. going to be more interesting, because like saying, oh, Valve, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, Valve is making money off that. Fair point. I don't think that's their motivation, because I think time and time again, Valve's is like, fuck it, we don't care. Um <laughs> Is this going to hurt the money trade? Okay, if it starts hurting the money trade, we could, all right, then, then we'll sort it out. Better fix, though. Quit trading imaginary bullshit online, kids. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good news. Somebody's back. back yeah, again. Jay Pinkerton is uh, back at Valve. Uh, he last he left last year uh, along with a couple other Valve writers. Uh, Jay Pinkerton was one of the writers responsible for Portal Two, which one day once they figure once they fix that. Uh, flickering bug we're gonna go and finish yes i swear like and, and anyways uh there he's back at valve um i can tell you exactly how the rehiring process went and that was someone walked up to him with a big old stack of money and slapped him in the face <laughs> said hey man you want you want a job again you're you're a working writer you got to take it where you can get it and Jay's know, like, do, do you think at like some point he's like wait, wait, wait you gotta call he's like hey we're making games again he's like oh shit all right <laughs> or, or or maybe they're just like, hey, we're making we're making a new thing. We want you to be the head writer or something like really really juicy. Who 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 knows? If uh, I'm sure at some gaming con, someone's gonna ask him at a Q and A. We'll get like an actual answer or whatever the PR approved one is. Mm-hmm. But true, I mean, true. if 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 you're excited about this, it's a thing. If not, well, who cares? Let's talk about Kerbals. Oh man, uh, yeah, we got some people coming in, but we got some people coming out as he furiously switches and votes. Uh, <laughs> Kerbal developers depart Valve. That's right. In mid 2017, former Valve employees da, 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 developed KSP. That that team joined, which was like, whoa, okay, that's mm-hmm. strange. But they went there to hang out, and uh, they've left Valve. Uh, they, this is from ValveTime.net. All this business in our show notes. Uh, they got this through their LinkedIn that states that. They're out and they're not working for Valve anymore. Uh, that seemed like a strange fit to begin with. Uh, I understand Valve wanting to bring in some talent. I'm not, mm-hmm. I don't mean that how that sounded mostly, but uh, what's, what's that black leather couch you're doing here? Right. Uh, brazers. Everything's better with brazers. But I'm only half joking when I say this is that crew, all right, A, they kind of had, they didn't. They had borderline fuck you money. That's part of it. Mm-hmm. Part two, that crew strikes me as people who wanted to make games, not this fight this office politics shit to try to get the slightest little thing done. Also known as Valve. Yeah, and it's uh, now that Valve has bought um, Camposanto. It, 
No, Pedro, that was it. When they, they did that, they're like, fuck that. <laughs> fuck them. I hate yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I know what it is. I know what it is. Gabe is like running some sort of like pit match cage fight <laughs> and they're buying out developers and making them fight to the death. <laughs> and whoever whoever loses gets like kicked out, right? Okay. Me, me, who, I, this, this is my headcanon and I'm sticking to it. I, I, I look forward to the new title available exclusively on the Apex Game Launcher. Um, that's a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. be a thing. Barry's Flash. back, baby. I talked about it. Flash sales reportedly coming back to Steam. And I guess we just needed to cover this because it's kind of a thing. So that was the thing that would show up middle of the day or something like that. And like, oh shit, some crazy stuff's on sale. You better get it now or you're going to lose your opportunity. Which I understand the logic behind this when you think about it. You know, keep people always checking the store, making, making, them, making it rain a little bit. But a lot of people but- were against it. Simply mm-hmm. because like this requires too much attention and I'm getting stressed out and it's hurting my fee-fees, Jordan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I, was, I, was, I was just going to say, like, you're going to start getting like flash sales. So it's like, what the fuck is this? Oh, yeah. Someone, some dev paid a hundred bucks and now it's on sale. Yep. Yeah. It's, and it's uh, uh, like the, uh, the article starts arguably one of the worst aspects about the old format. Flash sales are back. It's like. Yeah, that's your opinion, man. And the opinion of people who couldn't deal with the fact it's like, oh no, I missed the uh, the flash sale where the game was sixty percent off instead of fifty percent off. What will I do with my life? Flip a table, mother. <laughs> In- no, seriously, if you, if you're that guy, invent time travel. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I, ch- I challenge you. I believe in you. You can do better than bitch at Valve. Go invent time travel. So. Just flip tables. It's easier. Rocket cars. Uh, one point four nine. It's out. Uh, changes and updates. A uh, couple of little things. I mean, like small things. You're talking about PlayStation stuff, Xbox stuff. But Throwback Stadium is now an option. We're going to be playing that later tonight in the after shows, and um, that's going to be fucking fun. But the big, big bit about this is performance graphs. Look at this graph. Hashtag Nickelback. You get a performance summary, uh, short, long version, network summary, short, long version, uh, displays your FERPs and GPU data, network display packet, all this stuff. And correct me if I'm right. This is, they basically, this is all their internal shit that they're just like flip, flip switch. All right. Now you can see it. It's, yeah. Update. It's people are asking. He's like, we know you have it. Just enable it. Please, 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 please. <laughs> now, there, 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 is, there is apparently some issues on Linux and Mac with, uh, with this release. Apparently some background textures aren't loading. So we're going to see how that fucks up later tonight as well. Mm-hmm. Considering what we've been through with the history of this game, with the, like, like the <laughs> multi, spike multi, notes, multi right. synchronized spike crashes. Watching like seven out of people cascade in the nope. And it's like, that happened. That used to be a thing, kids. Uh, okay, good on them. We'll be trying it out. Uh, regular humans, we talked about this before, didn't we? We, we did, yeah. but now it's out. Yeah, this is just like p- pure distilled after show bait, man. Like, it, it's it, again, it's if you took lovers in a dangerous space time and tried to merge it with the game we're reviewing this week, I think you'd get something <laughs> relatively resembling regular human basketball. Um, yeah, it, it's it's out. I don't honestly like. I don't know what to say about this other than like I'm interested to see how this will actually play once we get like a group of people <laughs> together to actually carry this out. If only it's, we it's, it's, been I mean, doing something that accumulated. Too, yeah, so. four ninety nine. Why the fuck not? Right? Ex- yeah, exactly. No, it's uh, it's price to sell that one. Oh man, mm. did uh, Flippet do this or did they do that? Uh, it does he use the uh, Ubuntu GLibc two fifteen OS? That's uh, probably a Flippet port then. <laughs> or, at, or at least they used FNA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I, I guess that, that that's it's better than Rocket League basketball. I'll, it, it can't be worse, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Warhammer 40,000 Gladius. I'm actually excited for a 4X game. It's uh, it's out. You can play it on the Linuxes now. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan personally of like uh, 4X games, but I like me some Warhammer, and this might be a Dawn of War 2 scenario. Where it's like, oh, I hate real time strategy, but this there's enough there's enough shit in here to keep my brain pacified so that I don't care. Uh, so you get to play as either the orcs. The I'm impressed by the, this trailer. Zero <laughs> gameplay in it. Maybe the first one. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's gonna look it's gonna look like Civilization. That's 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 all. Um, I mean, you get you get the orcs, you get the Space Marines, the Imperial Guard, and the Necrons. I kind of want some Tau for the greater good. Um, but 
Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's it's priced to sell as a, not really priced to sell. It's forty five, forty nine Canadian. It's a licensed property though, and it looks like it has some production value behind it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm. We may end up taking a look at this for a Thursday stream just because I'm morbidly curious. There's a little bit of a burn there, man. No Mac. No Mac. Yeah. Well. Who who cares, right? If you're if you're gonna play this game on a Mac, you might get like third degree burns. So, <laughs> no, it won't. It will throttle way before that is ever an issue. Well, I think that's been fixed. Anyway, I'm not picking uh, on Mac users because I know we we we're going through the shit that you guys have been going through for a decade plus, mm-hmm. men. So, oh yeah. Ah, uh, then we had we had uh, we had a bit of an adventure Thursday evening. Here's the thing. Here's what pisses me off about this next story. Uh, yeah, Thursday. I was like, oh, I finished some contract work, and my idea. I was like, I'm gonna buy me something. I'm special. I'm gonna splurge. I'm gonna spend like two bucks or three bucks, or six dollars, whatever it was. And it was on this uh, Super Indie Cards. It's something that we talked about a long time ago, and it's still in active development. Air quotes. August first update. Welcome to Linux. It's a thing. You can play it. And uh, secret, secret, secrets. If you're wondering what it is, well, uh, it's Mario Kart. Take a look. Right. Audio <laughs> listeners. This is Mario Kart. 100%. And I scroll down. The reason I picked it up, multiplayer. I was like, okay, this is a fuck around game. Currently 30% off, regularly $9.99. It was $6.99. So I was like, I want to treat myself. I want to pick this up. I want to have some fun. Treat yourself. Right. And installed it. Um, it doesn't have online multiplayer at all. It doesn't <laughs> exist. So I, I went digging around the forums. I think Jordan did too. Yeah. And I, I found the initial post from two years ago from the developer who, who said he, he's working on it. But uh, last month, just last month, there was an update saying, yes, yeah, probably not going to happen. Yes, because reasons. Um, you just got to deal with that. And that's the thing. So, yeah, this is a Mario Kart clone that's been in development for three years. That's all I can say about it. Uh, think about that before making your purchase, because I don't I mean, it's, think... it, it, it's, it's sad, too, because, like, it could be a solid kart racing game. Yeah. And you'd want to you want to play that with your friends, because yeah. forever alone mode sucks in those games. Well, but, the guy, and, and he's that's... really spending a lot of time paying a lot of attention to the guy. That's why I don't want to shit on the guy. But he's like, man, I still got to tweak some things and work on some designs before I can even think about multiplayer. I'm like, dude, all right, this is going to come across wrong, but it's a fucking clone of Mario Kart. I mean, yeah, it's the the kind of game that is designed to be played with other people. And I don't know what uh, time zone you're living in, but I'm pretty sure the 90s have been over all around the world. So getting people around your place would, would, to play would, would, would you with say them? the 90s are over around the world around the world? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um but yeah, no, people don't go to each other's places nowadays. They just play games over the interwebs. So because we don't have to be social anymore, we can just yeah. be reclusive. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 so what, yeah, what, no, what do you what do you what do you think about that, player. Pedro Kuhn? Pedro Chan. <laughs> I, I have this oh, shot Jordan just because Sama. you two really like to talk over each other. So I had to set it. I had to bring it back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Feral. Feral, Feral, Feral. Had a bit of an announcement. I said, wait, one more thing before you head off to your weekend. We can now confirm Total War Warhammer 2 will be coming to Mac OS and Linux in early autumn. Uh, typical Feral style. Like, what date's that? What, what what date does autumn fall on? Like eh. uh, middle of September. That's when, when it starts. When, when, when is the autumnal equinox and when is the winter solstice? Well, it's one of those things. You'd be like, so uh, we'll go check the feral radar. Then the PR person at feral will be like, we don't know how that fucking thing works. Don't listen to that. Listen to our dates. Mm-hmm. And it's a new skin pack for Total War. It's being sold as a new game. Not against feral for doing that. Uh, however, if it's your thing, I guess good news. But I want to say. It's probably only going to be news if you're down for single player, because traditionally, as in everyone that's been released, is it, what is it, Pedro? I know it's Linux to Linux. We've done that, but yeah, is it even Linux to Mac? Usually Linux to no. Mac, yeah. Uh, some of the Total Wars actually support Linux to Mac. Mm. Not all of them, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the very first tweet that you see as a reply to their announcement is like, uh, so will there be cross-platform play? I want to play with my Mac using friend. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to, um, 
<laughs> we'll have to wait and see. I, 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 I totally parsed that sentence wrong. It's like, I want to play with my Mac using friend instead of Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, instead of, I want to play with my Mac using friend. Um, I read it the same way you did, man. Don't feel bad. I was like, oh, no. Uh, Twitter, Twitter, whoever his name was, uses friend. Um, that's a thing. And that, that's a very real thing you do got to keep in mind because we, if you check online, multiplayer, Total War is not my thing, but just in the process of uh, testing the games, it ain't nobody playing, man. I mean, yeah. and unless you know someone on Linux, that's that's about the only way you're going to go. Uh, Fortnite coming to Linux, right? Uh, well, it's Fortnite? totally not Fortnite, you guys. It's crazy justice. Uh, it's uh, Battle Skill Royale. Battle Sounds Skill like Royale. Yeah, it's well, it will be coming out in early access as the uh, little uh, thing on the top right of the page seems to indicate, but it will be available at some point during this month. And the thing that struck my um, curiosity, you know, besides the fact that, look, it's uh, Fortnite, but not really, uh, was that the publisher is listed as fig publishing inc this means this was a fig funded game yes <laughs> so i am curious to see what that will mean and uh, whether or not fig publishing will mean it's like okay there's a bunch of people who actually have some monetary investment in this game uh, whether or not hmm. they are happy with the game sucking big ass or you know if that'll be like a mark of quality if it comes out and it's a fic published game, then it's none of none of this good, matters, right? Pedro. None of this <laughs> matters. Do you want to know why? Mm. Why? It's free. It'll have it in app purchases of Scatter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. The community's gonna be dog shit as in all things free are. <laughs> well, but the, and the, the Fortnite the, the, the Fortnite Battle Royale is free to play. And that and that's the thing that really like I, I saw that in China. It's like a yeah, Fortnite. It's, it's the Fortnite clone. No, it looks exactly like fucking Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Like it I, is dangerously it. Fortnite. I mean, just yeah. hundred percent. But let's face it, we're never gonna get a Fortnite on Linux. So I'm willing to take the Pepsi challenge with this. Just yeah, because we didn't get Maybe. the PUBGs, we didn't get the DayZeds, and uh, we're not getting Fortnite. So I, I want to see what this battle royale thing is. And you know, Maybe there's the culling. <laughs> like I said, we didn't get any battle royale on Linux, Pedro. And if calling. you look at the system requirements, you'll notice uh, minimum system requirements on Linux doesn't require Linux. No yeah. OS. Brilliant. It's, like Garf it's like Garfield minus Garfield. Linux without Linux. In Let's run, run it on the herd kernel. It's fun. All right. Blast from the past. Yes, the Forsaken Remaster. So earlier this week, uh, I personally felt uh, attacked by Iculus on Twitter when he posted about this. It's like, oh, look, it's a, a, an old game that's now available on Linux, and it's available on Linux at the exact same time that uh, Windows and Mac. So it's like, oh, oh, someone was listening to the show and heard me calling him out on it. <laughs> But yeah, no, this uh, this one is uh, Forsaken Remastered. Uh, it's uh, six degrees of freedom, sort of, kind of, <laughs> uh, like old style game where you go around with a spaceship and you explore some very tight, um, confined spaces because the, these were the olden times where processing power wouldn't let you have big, wide open spaces uh, with a lot of detail going for them. So uh, corridors and caves and ruins were par for the course. And that's what this is. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I knew you had your ego inflated. And I was like, hey, man, is that, is that true about Pedro? And he's like, what the hell's a Pedro? Uh, <laughs> Figures. <laughs> here's the thing with this, though. Uh, there's a project. Good work, Agulus, uh Called Forsaken X that I remember like five or six years ago. Which is this game? It's updated with high res textures. I think it's still on GitHub, but um, this is more updated, I guess. And you know, it's going to have SDL2 goodness, so your controls and all that's going to work. I don't think your Microsoft Sidewinder is necessarily going to be the piece of kit you want to break out with this. But it'll still probably work, though. That's the crazy yeah. thing. <laughs> um, and, and I mean, like this, this is all thanks to uh, the people funding Ikibuts on Patreon that enables them to sort of take these more esoteric projects. You can just focus on porting games as opposed to like, oh, I need to get license X and blah, blah, blah. You can just go to them and say like, hey, I'm getting paid to do this. Let me port your game. Patreon is a beautiful thing, yeah. man. I mean, 
that it allows people to do stuff like get bricks of uh, video cards. Uh, <laughs> get bricks. All right. Uh, speaking <laughs> speaking of bricks, uh, Chasm. Chasm. That's, sure. Chasm. <laughs> That's a segue. So Chasm, uh, it's a... Uh, a procedurally generated Metroidvania. The exact same platform. price as Forsaken, a game older than you. Yes. <laughs> uh, and it's um, it's out. Uh, it came out to neutral reviews. And uh, considering that 273 people, well, it's like two thirds are say uh, two thirds of the people who've left reviews are saying that it's good. So maybe there was just a bit of a hiccup when it first released and they will uh, have it fixed in short order, but it looks good. It looks very good. Actually. Uh, it's uh, what is um, kind of sticking out for me is the procedurally generated metroidvania type of thing because you metroidvania, love that shit. It, it, it worked for rogue legacy so yes it works for rogue legacy but <laughs> I, I mean I, I i as much as it pains me to my very core i gotta agree with you on the fact that it looks it looks pretty good but yeah that that asking price is pretty steep you know i think about it. that though man i mean it's not it looks like it's as well done as Hellboy, and Hellboy had a fuck you price, but it was it delivered uh, on the, that price. This one's uh, this one's FNA as well. It has mm -hmm. the magical GLIP COS requirements. Yeah, that's the thing. I think it looks all right, and twenty bucks if it's well done. Yeah, yeah. If if, if the if the quality is there, but that's the, that's that remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. Achtung. Panzer. Duh. So uh, this is later Panzer. Uh, it's le early le access later game. Panzer. It's Lida not Lida Panzer? Hosen. It's Lida Panzer. Lida Panzer. All right. Le 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 Leather Panther. Yeah, that's what we're going to call it. <laughs> Leather Panther. Um, it's apparently coming out on September 3rd. It is a tank combat game. Um, and I guess it has a little bit of a battle royale aspect, but that's kind of what tank combat has been from Genesis. <laughs> uh I'm late lately. Like I, I get it was it was funny with but Goat Simulator. You, it's funny did, with another did, couple did, of those. Did you just miss that? It's flying tanks and memes. <laughs> I listen. I I don't know what to think anymore about the whole jank as aesthetic because, like I said, for Goat Simulator, it was funny. That was the joke, right? But now it's just like, oh, well, now 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 with like Fortnite and PUBG, but rainbows and pentagrams. Come on, want. it's a, man. Come on. Satan wants nothing to do with this game. I guarantee it. <laughs> Un unless someone's willing to sell their soul to make this game sell well or run. It requires um, 4,000 megabytes of memory, by the way. 4,000 <laughs> gigajoules, man. It's just um, under 4 gigs. <laughs> also, also doesn't require any Linux. Um, and I guess we got, we, got one, we got one more story to, uh, to close us out. Feathers fell across... The naked land. Uh, this is this is feather. It's a walking simulator, except you're not walking. You're flying. You're a bird. This is life with life is strange with wings, man. Mm -hmm. No, life, <laughs> life is strange. Actually, had some engaging <laughs> elements. This is you Ooh. fly around and you fly around. Uh, it, it's it's another one of these like Zen chill out games. And I guess if that's like you. Here, here, here's what I think. I think it would be great if you're on like shrooms or acid or you know, something. This the, game would the be thing just went fantastic. through a Stargate, and if it came out the other end and it's like some Jaffa gun the fucker down, I'd be like, all right, you got my yeah, money. It's, it's, it's just like a fucking hot talk mothership or something. Right. Just blasting at it. Just smacks See, into it. Gets sucked into may, an engine. May, maybe they'll have Steam Workshop. Maybe we can we, we can make that a reality. We still need to get that fucking Stargate mod for UT 2004 working. I got it working. You never could. Yeah, I guess I got to take another crack at it. Uh, mainly because the instructions were in French, and I just shut down whenever people start speaking French at me. All right, that, uh, hey, that does it for uh, our I would ass. like to say my piece about the oh. game, Mister Speedy Pants. All right, all right, all right, all right Mister yeah. Mister Not posting stuff in there. Sure. Hey, man, listen, I posted all the fucking show notes, bitch. Go fuck yourself. Um, this looks like that uh gliding game. Um, oh yeah, the, yes. Yeah, that, oh that, no, the other one, uh, the Nintendo sounding one. Yeah, the yes, SNES sounding yeah. one. I don't remember the name of it. That's probably not that's Can't remember. a sign, <laughs> but in the fact that it looks real pretty and it's like, oh yeah, there's something to like dick around in. But man, after 10 minutes of really nothing, yeah, I just never came back to it. And I kind of feel like that might be the same with this shrooms, man. You need to take more shrooms. All right, yes, fine. 
All right. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going that place. That's, that's a little too dark. <laughs> Coming up next, uh, how much does it take to make a classic game? And why, why, why would you host copyrighted assets on your publicly hosted GitHub? We'll find out. Over here at Linux Gamecast Weekly, we're testing our uh, brand new line of uh, vegan ice cream. We call it the... Uh, <laughs> the Venn Cocaine cubes. is vegan, right? <laughs> exactly, man. It's got the kids packaging and all that and the happy shit and it just says drugs on it. I guess there's very little in the way of meat protein and drugs. So Meat yeah, protein, sure. yes. <laughs> now with a vitamin meat protein. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> you just get a steak on top of your ice cream. It's good stuff. Uh, all right. Well, if you if you have questionable food combinations that you love to eat, you might fit in with one of the people who give us money because apparently you have some bizarre taste as well. And you can head it over to linuxgamecast.com. Click the, click the support the shows button. We got all sorts of stuff for you to click on. Enter your credit card number. It helps us out. It, it really does. We got a bunch of affiliate links, too. So if you just want to go out and buy some stuff from like Humble or Amazon or Newegg, and you want to help us out a little bit, click that link first. Because we totally forget to do that all the goddamn time. Uh, it's free money on our part. Um, of course, you can always head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. 117 of you are just completely insane. Mm-hmm. And you're, 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 you're giving us some money to produce quality content like Jordan flies into a rock for 30 minutes on Thursday. Or <laughs> Pedro, Jill, and Ben talk about some things and then make raspberry pie jokes for another hour. It's all good stuff. We got to thank um, we got to thank our latest Patreon, uh, Stein Eric Svendheim, Steinheim. Uh, he uh, he he's helping us out. We got to give a big shout out to that and everyone who makes this possible because we we really couldn't do it without you. This with 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 like the, with like the the monetary donations, the hardware donations. Just spread the word. We we really do appreciate it. It I'm keeps not. it keeps it keeps us independent. It keeps us. I don't want to say relevant because I don't no, think we ever were. Relevant. We refuse to be relevant, <laughs> but it does help keep the fucking lights on. And we we have a memorial there of the fine upstanding cannibals who have helped put this business together. They're also in the credits because you know we love you. All right, that's enough shilling out. Um, thanks again, everybody who's making that happen. Uh, what do we get at first? Oh, that's right, we get to talk about this. So MCV again, everything in the show notes. When we made. Hollow Knight, Team Cherry's co-directors, Eric Gibson, William Pellin, explain how going for a hand-drawn insect theme title was a way to avoid some challenges and real-world inspirations for Hollow They basically walked through how they stuck this together. And Hang on, Jordan. Are, are you done squeaking? <laughs> All right, I'm done. All right. I, I just wanted to know if you had some more in you, man. Well, we'll, we'll see. My, my squeak beater will refill. All right, all right. Pedro giggled so hard he made his camera go out of focus. Um, this is going to be a sh- There it goes. All right. It's kind of brilliant. <laughs> so what we're talking about uh, is what can be done for... This is what struck me in this article. 32,000 pounds they made Hollow Knight for. That's 40,000 wet stinky caches. They made one of the best platformers released in the last decade. Games. One of the best games. Hey, man, this is a brilliant piece of kit. I mean, that's what they were able to do with that. And here I was personally thinking I was done sucking off Team Cherry. No, uh uh-uh. Because they also, this is why we're covering it, managed to deliver a Linux port on day one. And I want everyone at home, every every single one of you, to keep all of the above, all of that in mind, they were able to pull this off so little. Why? Because they were resourceful. They were scrappy. They got their parents and friends to do voices and art. And keep all of that in mind. Next time a developer bitches out on delivering a Linux port. And keep all of that in mind. Next time a developer delivers a busted piece of half-functioning nope. And says, you need to be grateful for what I've given you. Hi, Gary. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, like, yeah, the, the entire the entire article is just completely fascinating. Um, yeah, the, they, they got like one of the guy's moms to voice that <laughs> uh, that NPC we have on screen right there. Um, yeah. And, and the fact that, like, they keep producing like multiple games worth of content. I think we're up to like three, four or five full games within like the span of Hollow Knight. You could probably mm-hmm. play through in terms of uh, completing it. Dark Carnival, and, yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, and and again, like for for forty thousand bucks, that's insane. Like it it really goes to show you, like idea, like properly implemented. This is this is how the Kickstarter model should work. I mean, it doesn't hold true for every single thing, but these guys were able to pull it off, stick to their limitations, and produce something quite masterful as a result. Well, it also is a bit telling because I mean, you'll see Kickstarters, and I know we've seen it over the years. Is the I really easy to use a stainless Carmageddon reincarnation. I mean, what did we add it up? They have like $6 million. Right. Oh, right. No, that was, but yeah, we that see was, that was other teams that come together and they get like a hundred thousand, $130,000 to produce a game. And they're like, Oh, step one. Uh, let's get an office. I'm like, Oh fuck. You guys are fucked <laughs> right there. That's step one. Just showing what can be done if you're resourceful. And there's some cutesy ass shit about one of their, uh, the husband of one of their moms who vo- voiced that character. He's playing Hollow Knight to find out all the spots and all the characters and NPCs that she voiced. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Ah, that, <laughs> that, that 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 is cute." Yeah, that's kind of cute. Okay, uh, humble bundle because you know gamers love sports ball or sports related stuff. Well, a lot a lot of them do. It's uh, let's uh, face it, uh, EA keeps putting out FIFA and uh, whatever else every single year, and people keep buying them. But this particular bundle doesn't include any of those unless you count Football Manager. Uh, so uh, at the base level, you have Grid Two, which isn't on Linux, a Sega Bass Fishing, which isn't on Linux, and uh, East Side Aki Manager, which isn't on Linux. Uh, then if you pay more than the average, you get Motorsport Manager, which is on Linux, Dirt Rally, which is on Linux, uh, Super Blood Hockey, which is on Linux, and uh, so ba- ba- basically that. every everything of the pay above the average <laughs> and above has a Linux version. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's let's just abbreviate that a little bit. No, I suppose. Okay. Listen, listen, Pedro <laughs> wanted to fill some air, man. That's what that was. Listen, you pay twelve bucks, you get all the included plus F1 2017, which is a Vulcan mm-hmm. title from Feral. That works good if it's your thing. And we were talking to the pre-pre super shows, and it's like, man, I got to keep in mind because this is Motorsports Manager and Football Manager. Because five or six years down the road, I'm like, what the fuck do I own these games again? <laughs> um. Yeah, no, it's totally worth it if you just uh, if somehow you still don't have Dirt Rally on Linux. If you pay more than the four uh, four sixty two pound that it is currently uh, f- uh for the above the average tier it's absolutely worth it for dearth rally just on its own yes dearth rally dearth rally, rally. Darth, 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 Darth. All right. Darth, Darth, Darth Rally, where you're just racing around as Darth, Darth. Vader and just screaming from my <laughs> point of view the Jedi are evil shut up all right open more one Ooh, yes. So uh, this particular band of crazy people have been quiet for a while, but they're back. They're back and they went straight back into it and they put out version 0.44 with a ton of fixes along with the two usual videos that they do lately, which is the one is the release commentary and the uh, the other one is dedicated to OpenMWCS, which is their uh, content editor. So it's... It's actually really interesting to see because even though they have been a bit quiet, they have still uh, very much been putting in a lot of work with the engine. And one of the things that they brought up in the video was that, oh, yeah, uh, this is a relatively big update with the bug fixes, but the version 0.45 will be coming soon with significant performance improvements to the uh, to the engine. And I'm kind of curious to see what that means because right now, uh, the only performance tips you get is if you enable the uh, extra distant land. If you go to the INI config and you add the extra key to say, just render everything that your hardware can handle, that will basically bring the game down to its knees. But uh, yeah, that that will be coming with the next version. This version, they say that shadows are still not implemented and... Um, for the known issues, and uh, the Linux targz file requires Qt4 and libpng12. Libpng12 is fine; most distros still have it. Qt4. All right, I, I gotta ask: do, do you keep like separate show notes? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, so, so <laughs> of, of, of the shit that uh, is relevant for gameplay, uh, they, they've included a couple new things, like a search bar for spells. So, if you are playing a spellcaster type, you can just type your spells out and cast them there's some advanced launcher options and the ability to sit quick save to multiple save slots so you can save scum superiorly superiority save scum 
S words. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, a gang of new shit. Go check it out. Maybe Pedro will play it again and everyone will be mm-hmm. happy because uh I don't know, no fog. What I want some fog. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Turok. All right. Uh so um SC2K, uh, the Sim or OpenSC2K, the um, open source SimCity 2000 reimplementation had a bit of a snafu. Uh, they were taken mm-hmm. down from GitHub recently because they, it turns out that they were actually still hosting a lot of the art assets that for that game engine that they were re-implementing. And that's a no-no. That's straight up not allowed. Um, speaking, speaking of games like Open Morrowind, they specifically say, yeah, you need to go out and buy this copy of the game um, and get the assets from and sometimes from it. Sometimes they'll have a utility for extracting them. Sometimes they'll give you instructions on how to do it yourself. The point is that when you're going to try write something to uh, ingest someone else's intellectual property, you should not include that set intellectual property alongside it unless you have the rights signed, notarized, etc. So um, th- that 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 is that is definitely a thing that happens. Empty Empty was talking about this earlier in Discord, and yeah, he's right. EA is shitty. They're scumbags, but you know they're they're in the right this time, and yep. apparently they're gonna have a new repo with uh, everything minus the copyrighted assets. So this is not the end word of uh, OpenSC 2K by far, but it's a bit of a dumb move. It is definitely a bit yeah. of a boneheaded move. I mean, to like quote the author, um, he's like, "I just wish they'd reached out first. I would have gladly removed." He's talking about EA too. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have gladly removed the content quickly and without issue. To which I reply, "Fuck right off." Um, <laughs> seriously, uh, who told you? Everyone, the entirety of the internet told you uh, that you know. I, this was a bad idea. Don't do this. This is going to happen. Because, like, seriously, I mean, unless you have to wear fucking arm floaties to eat soup, you knew this was a bad idea. It's like, oh, maybe I'm special. I, 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 I need to do that, and I still knew it was a bad idea. Well, that's so. half the reason I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we just talked about OpenMW, and uh, OpenMW themselves, they ran into, way early on, they ran into Bethesda's lawyers because uh, Bethesda are very litigious when it comes to anything that they even remotely sniff as a possible trademark infringement. So would you, did you actually think that credit card, uh, electronic cards would let you just give out their assets Listen, for a game that they're still like selling a weird on Origin? learning lesson. I mean, the dude genuinely <laughs> seemed dumbfounded. Just like, they just removed my repo. And I was like, you didn't have backups for you. I just kept writing. He's like, yeah, you didn't have backups either. Like, Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Uh, Star Trek. Star Trek's. Oh my God. John Luke Picard's getting a brand new series. You guys were not talking about that. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about uh, Scum VM, and they have added support for the DOS versions of Star Trek 25th Anniversary Edition, which was a uh, DOS game released on the 25th on the 25th anniversary of Star Trek. Surprise, surprise! Um, but it works for the most part. Some of the ship to ship combat stuff uh, hasn't been implemented yet, so Scum VM will just out- outright skip those portions and move you to the next part of the uh, adventure game. Um, there is the potential that this version of Scum will also support the sequel, Star Trek Judgment Rights, because it used the same engine. But mm, no one's actually tried it, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say this 100 percent works. I'm just saying it might. It yeah, is, uh, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's Star Trek on Scum. So uh, we're basically talking like uh day day of the tentacle in space. But yeah, yeah with, with 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 more with more Kirk back in on green checks. All right, I could be down with that. I, I say good on them. Good work. Uh, what do we get up next? Uh, demo of Glyph. Glyphs of Eldemir. It's uh, it was a uh, or is still ongoing. Um, Kickstarter for a pay what you want dungeon roguelike. Uh, so. That's a bunch of buzzwords right there. Uh, the The big thing here is that originally they did not have a uh, Linux demo available. And they do now. Uh, it's um, You could just download it. Uh, the developer says that two very kind people volunteered their time to test the builds uh, uh, as they were working on. Uh, and now they feel confident in releasing this uh, particular demo. Uh, he says also that he doesn't run 
Linux or Mac OS and didn't want to release a build that may be broken on those platforms. One, I can respect that. Two, you got to understand, Fair. developing games is expensive, Pager. He would have had to went down to the Linux store and bought the <laughs> Linux computer. I mean, that would have been like $5,000 right there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and, and, and I mean, like the guy's only asking for about 1300 bucks Canadian anyways. So uh, that that is the thing. I, th I think it's a thousand a thousand bucks US. Thousand yeah. dollars US. Yeah. Currently 550, 73 pounds. backers, 31 days to go. Uh, best of luck, man. Best of luck. Yeah. And I, I mean, like, hey, you're, you're upfront about click and export. And I mean, it's for that style of Unity games, I'm pretty sure there's not going to be too much in the way issues. Probably unless... not. Mostly like controller issues I think you're going to run into. But here's the thing, man. I mean, if long as long as the developers are up front, you're like, hey, man, I don't even Linux, bro, you know. And, and you know what you're getting into? I, if you still want to support it, I'm fine with that. It's not like uh, total Linux support and never <laughs> materializes at all. Yeah, so. the thing with the uh, click export uh, Linux ports are uh, especially Unity ones when the developer gets uh, shader packs off of the Unity store that those are uh, DirectX shader packs usually. So when you click export, shit ain't gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, how about how about some less QQ and more more PP? Pew pew. So Q Engine. It's available on GitHub and it's a cross-platform retro game engine. And it's based on the Quake 2 engine. And the developer is trying to get rid of as many dependencies as humanly possible. To the point where he removed OpenGL from the game. Uh okay. Now I'm not going to argue that that won't in fact cut a lot of the dependencies. It only out has the an engine. ASCII render. <laughs> It will certainly get rid of a ton of dependencies, but who the hell is going to want to use your engine going forward knowing that it doesn't have a graphical layer to start with? Hipsters. <laughs> Vul Vulcan users. Vulcan hipster. Hipsters from Vulcan. <laughs> I was into logic before Serex Awakening. Thank you very much. Or Serox, uh, uh, not Serex, sir. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm a bad Star Trek nerd. Um, yeah, no, it's it, it's it's definitely a thing. The guy, the guy's like, oh, I want to sort of, if people like games of the Quick Two era, here's an engine that provides the same limitations. Uh, that they're putting a lot of emphasis on the software render and documenting everything, which I think is a good thing for a lot of open source projects because their documentation sucks so hard. <laughs> you know, I, good luck on the project. I mm, hope it was a good learning experience it just makes me want to go back and play quake 2 i played the piss out of quake 2 in university so yeah 1998 there was a lot of quake 2 going on at my place <laughs> good times uh yeah i'm old get off my lawn uh python oh python yeah uh this is pixel pixel poxel whatever um it's a it's a retro game engine uh, done in python uh yeah, it's for making games that look like they're on the Nintendo Entertainment System, done entirely in Python. This one actually, this one actually has some pretty decent documentation right in the README, which I got to appreciate. Um, but yeah, it's it's available from pip. If you don't want to build it yourself, you can just do pip install Pixel and start making your hipster Pixel game, I guess. Well, you know, hey, the, you know it is uh, perfect because the install instructions, Arch and uh, Debian. It's cool. I don't know. When you say it's NES, I'm going to say, no, this is more like Master System, man. Maybe, maybe yeah, is... the colors seem a little more Master System-y. Yeah. But 8-bit yeah. games of that vention. It's like Alex Kidd saying. in the budget world. And and they say that the uh, the engine is actually targeting the Pico 8 and the Tic 80. So you know exactly what this is going for. This is going for that TD Tidy uh, 128 by 128 uh, system that we talked about long ago. Mm -hmm. They still make them. What are you are talking about? Like the chip? Yeah, didn't didn't yeah, Mir yeah. make a video on that? Like the one time he yeah, made it's based on the chip. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Pedro, remember that show we do on Wednesdays where we talked about him going yeah, out of the, business? The, I know the chip died, but uh, they could have had a surplus of chips and just made more Pico eights out of it. Shut up, Pedro! Now you're just making me want chips. Get me some Doritos, <laughs> goddammit. it! Make me fries. Um. <laughs> We got we got one we got one thing left and this is open raw open uh, red alert 
the open source engine re-implementation for the Command and Conquer series. They have a new playtest release, 2118.0729, and they got a whole whack of improvements, game fixes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the, one, one, of, one, of the, uh, one of the big things here is they are ditching Debian packaging. And they're hmm. going towards app images, which as which I think is actually a smart move for distributing your game, uh, especially if you can like throw a little front end for like point us at your game resources and we'll go and do this stuff and have it all supported out of the box. And as a Fedora user, it's always kind of bugged me that projects would only provide like Ubuntu installers. Oh, you whiny Fedora users. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got to unpack dev and I, 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 I got to compile stuff from source man. It's 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 a, it's a whole ordeal. Well, listen, at least you're on Fedora and you know how to do that, or Arch users would be left stranded. <laughs> this, this, this is also is true. It, it's not in the AUR. Oh God, what do I do? We're joking. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> I'm I, I'm sure at least one Arch user knows how to use Git because I don't even fucking know how to use Git, man. <laughs> That, that that is the that is the hundred percent the reason Microsoft paid seven billion dollars for GitHub is because someone actually made Git usable. Could I listen, man? Uh, don't worry. I mean, I, it's good to see app images. I, it's better than snaps, so maybe not. I don't know. Snaps are all right, app images, and what else? Flat packs. So mm-hmm. we don't know which one of those is going to win. It's not going to be RPMs, though, buddy. Sorry, <laughs> damn you, Susie. You killed it. RPMs. I blame you. All right. Those are pretty established, to be fair. <laughs> All right, coming up next, we're going to take a look at regular ordinary co- hockey. Regular ordinary cocky. That that's that's more what I want to call it. <laughs> you know, you, you you think what with me being Canadian, I would be super aesthetic for playing this game. But the moral of the story is, I actually. F- fucking hate hockey so we're gonna play some regular ordinary hockey this week uh it's built by lauren lemke lemek whatever uh it's developed on it's developed raw on mono game no fna no anything like or no unity or anything like that you can pick it up for about five to seven of your wet stinky currency what is it relieve the relieve 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 the classic <laughs> golden age of arcade sports gaming with super blood hockey a violent homage to classic 8-bit and 16-bit ice hockey games uh we got this on uh, a humble bundle because of the the whole sports thing so uh no thanks to lauren for that but we're still gonna take a look at his game uh this is the position where we take a take a game we break it down we give it the facts of does it launch the performance the graphics and the controls and then we give it a scare uh sc- a scare, scare us. <laughs> Boom, a score from one to four Boom, cheers, okay. uh based on quality and we also take a look at it from the fun perspective and we give it an arbitrary score of one to four chairs to see if we liked it or not so let's kick it off then tell us about regular ordinary hockey on ubuntu ladies and gentlemen let's see if we're gonna try to break this game apart uh 1804.1, I think that's a thing, or dot whatever the fuck it is today. Um, out of the box, Ryzen 1700, 980, no problems. UHD, 3840 by 2160, that's right, it's not 4K, kids. Out of the box, no issues. It was able to deliver 60 hipster pixels per second most of the time. There is some slowdown if you increase the bloodletting to 500%, because that's immediately what I did. I did see one glitch in the tutorial, but it sorted itself at kind of what like out of sync out of focus i think we all saw this because we have mm-hmm. uhd monitors but it wasn't an issue controls use the steam controller even though it showed me xbox prompts all the buttons work i mean you know a b x y shoulder buttons all you need for this kit and uh logically laid out didn't have to remap anything so yeah i'll give it a clean bill of health four green shares on that with a humbuntu so how about the fedoras man did we get well, some love well on uh, Fedora 2864-bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, it did fucking launches. Uh, make sure to disable VSync for maximum FURPS, you guys. So this <laughs> game will buckle, will bring your video card to its knees. Um, yeah, uh, graphics-wise, yeah. I There was the weird zoomy issue um, that happened in the tutorial, but that didn't happen afterwards. So I think it was just like some weird bug. Uh, not really gameplay game play impacting at all. Man, I can't just I just can't pronounce letters today. Uh, and control wise, it picks up the DualShock Four. It gives you prompts for the Xbox controller, but everything works aside from that. So I gotta give it four chairs for the for the functional stuff. 
Yes, over here on Solus 3.99999 with the Ryzen uh, 5 1600 and the GTX 1080. It works very much out of the box. It also remembers full screen and windowed settings, which is more than I can say for Unity games nowadays. Uh, the performance is great uh, unless you're trying to record it because during cutscenes, uh, the FERPs will dip a little bit, but then they'll pick back up. The graphics. Yeah, it's uh, much like Ven and Jordan already mentioned, uh, the fight scene in the tutorial when they're teaching you to just mash B. Uh, it's zoomed in all the way and you can only make like half the text. Uh, but it's uh, it works fine. Otherwise, it's just that little hiccup. And the controls work uh, for the uh, both the Mistress and the 8-Bit 2 controllers. Both of them work just fine. So four chairs, clean bill of hell. All right, well, that's the functional section, so good scores on that. Fun-wise, Ven, do you like playing some hockey? Oh, man. You know, Linux and hockey, it goes together because reasons. Fuck you. Well, fin- Finland, right? Uh, right. Uh, no, like, <laughs> seriously, seriously, when I went to Finland, it's like, oh, you're Canadian? You're going to talk about hockey with me. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, check it out, man. I mean, outside of the first match being North Korea versus uh, Russia, it's like that had to be done. It's uh, the first thing I noticed uh, is somebody had definitely put Mega Man chiptune music in my hockey game. I was like, whoa, this this is frighteningly close. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's a hipster pixel game. What the fuck do you expect, right? It does definitely remind me of the NES sports games of old. Get the fuck off my lawn, kids. It's dead simple, really hard to cock up. That's what I like about it. Not a whole lot of, I mean, there's strategy and stuff like that. You got to fight against it, even on easy. Very, very challenging, even on easy for an old fuck like me. Um... As I said, cutting the blood up, 500%. That business is real. It's cute. And Pedro mentioned it has battle mechanics where you fight, kind of like NBA Jam or something like that, or whatever it was, that fighting game with the basketballs. There's a lot of mutators to tinker with. Uh, You do have to unlock a couple of them. Unfortunately, there's no mustaches for French Canadians. It makes me less sad. But most importantly, what really gives me a sad face is no online multiplayer. Because this could be a nice little fuck around because it's got tournament mode with brackets and all that. That could be interesting. Plus, you can cut the match length down to just one minute per quarter or whatever the fuck all they have in hockey. Hi, Canada. I love you. Um, <laughs> it's all right, man. I mean, listen, it, it's a safe thing to say that you could play this game for five minutes and you're going to know whether or not it's your jam, whether or not you're going to continue playing it, because it's something you can pick up, get angry at, put down. It's a safe bet to buy. It's in the humble. It's cheap. And if you don't like it, Steam refunds, man. Maybe you want to buy it there instead of the bundle, but use the bundle. You can get a lot of extra shit. Uh, I think we got an offer thing, link, something on our website. Help us Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yeah, go click on that. that and go subscribe to Patreon. Patreon.com. Ah! You shameless whore. How did you like it? <laughs> I fucking hate this game, man. Um, I, I so like I, I played like actual hockey as a child. So um, some of the limitations of this game makes me kind of angry in the sense that you know I I know for a fact that you can do this one thing, but the game won't let you. I also like how the AI has its shit together while your team is just completely derptastic. Um, mm-hmm. Like so much so, where like my goalie just stopped trying after a while and just would let all the goals in. While meanwhile, we got fucking Curtis Joseph on the other team deflecting everything and like ah. Uh, I've never really got the appeal of sports games. I've been one of those people where if I wanted to go play a sport, I'd like go outside and play a sport. But I mean, if this is your jam, if you like NES or Genesis hockey, then it might be for you. This is not a game that will change anyone's mind in that capacity. It's just, uh, it's it's one of those games, much like golf, where if you put, like, uh, give me a sport with a stick, I will invariably try to hit someone with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can hit. That's part of the strategy with this. You, 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 you can. Mm-hmm. And, like, I, I, I checked my stats after, like, one of the games. Like, I had significantly higher shot totals and, like, punch totals than the other team. But it's just like, no, they will continually kick your ass because the AI knows what you're doing or knows what they're doing. And for the player facing AI, they just kind of, fucks up constantly mm. uh not very fun not my jam make of that what you will one chair well pedro yeah. is somebody else who has a mustachio and beard that do not connect mm-hmm. uh no uh much like jordan i too hate sports games uh, i thought <laughs> you know maybe with the focus on the goofy stuff and the emphasis on the violence i know what i said uh maybe Pointers. i could find something to enjoy here 
I didn't. Uh, the it's a hipster pixel. It's a hipster pixel hockey game with perhaps the single most annoying soundtrack I've heard since Power Rumi. So minus points for reminding me of that piece of shit game. Um, the only thing so called uh, uh, the only so called sports games that I enjoy are the driving racing ones like Dirt Rally, uh, Grid very much like those games but then again i draw the line on the f1 games i'm not a big fan of those damn it i'm not uh, logged into steam i was about to gift you the soundtrack it's only an instance yeah uh it's uh i don't like it i it didn't change my mind on the genre and it got itself muted pretty damn quickly one chair all right well that is that for the uh trick musician we got any final thoughts about regular ordinary hockey uh, Super blood hockey 799 if it's your thing listen i could understand like if you got somebody to play against i mean playing against the ai is going to get boring but it is fucking challenging it's got that that's what i say when it reminds me of like old nes games is th- that's something to do man you got to get good with this or unfortunately we got a billion games to play so you can bitch out as soon as you rage up a little bit but 799 it's worth a try like i said five minutes you're gonna know whether or not this is your jam this is something i'll definitely come back and just fuck around with i'm not gonna get into the tournament mode or anything like that i'll do an exhibition match and fuck around with some mutators and like all right i, I i'm good yeah if you got the uh the humble bundle uh the humble sports bundle uh by all means give it a try if you didn't i'd say give it a pass unless you really like hockey games hipster pixel hockey games all right and yeah fuck this game i hate it so coming <laughs> up next we get to hear from uh root gamer because well not really root gamer but one of one of the extra gamer guys who still uh, stays in touch with us we'll talk about savage lands stay tuned hold on to your pants because no. we're coming to a screeching halt yes it's the guys. end well, the look, end look of at the Mr. show fancy with his pants <laughs> haven't you done well, well? I am wearing pants. I kind of have to on accounts of me getting up in between segments and uh, going to get drinky. So, yeah. Uh, If you'd like to uh, share some of that uh, lovely, lovely hate mail with us, go on over to LinuxGameCast.com. It's a fancy new website, uh, What Ven did. No, it's not, Pedro. uh... It's a theme. (laughs) <laughs> oh yes it's just a new wordpress theme uh <laughs> no, he, he wrote it all in vi with the with a freaking yeah yes vi on the browser uh just click the contact button fill out the form make sure to pick lgc weekly from the little drop down choosy thing and uh click on the captcha google might ask you to train their ai while you're at it but hey that's just par for the course so this week we don't have so much in the way of hate mail but a bit of a heads up uh, yeah, Shay. this is from, from Shay, from uh, formerly Root Gamer. He says, Savage Lands is back in business and good is a decent survival game. Uh, new ownership that seems to be doing good by the users so far. Lots of updates. So we, we, we talked about that a while ago where um, Savage Lands swapped owners. We we're like, oh, yeah, well, this, this, this is going to be the uh, this is going to be Topware Interactive or whatever the fuck did uh, Curse of the Ravens cry. <laughs> um, and apparently not. Apparently. Or um, what was it? Storm United where they like they pawned that off. It's like, oh, yeah, we're going to make an entirely different game. Yeah, they just no, tapped it, out on that one, man. Yeah. Yeah. It, as, it, as it turns out, the, the people who have taken over Savage Lands are doing an OK job, according to Che. So that that's good. It's good. It's good to be proven wrong on, on that regard. It yeah. is. Um, Savage Lands, the reason he brings this up, because we were talking about Gary's like, uh, Linux is hard, even with Unity. Mm-hmm. So survival, whatever type of games. That's what Savage Lands is. Uh, minus Caveman P9. Uh, plenty of rocks to smash people in. I downloaded it. Give it the Pepsi challenge because I haven't played it in months and months and months since they said, uh, we're going to wash our hands of this and somebody else is going to pick it up. The studio did a half decent, well, more than a half decent job because it manages to run at 60 FERPs uh, yes. at 1080, which I would say, what? I've never seen that in this game ever, even with a Ryzen 1700 and a 980. Um, neat. It is a bit. Just, just a wee on the Technicolor side with uh, some of the graphics, with some of the textures. They flip out just a little bit. Um, I might have to go back and check it and play around with it. It's still immediately... All right. This, this is something I, I will eat shit on. If you play this game, I guess maybe this would apply to Minecrafters too. Legitimate reason to have 16 or 32 gigs of RAM because this thing's going to nom eight to ten gigs on startup. 
Yep. Because of reasons. <laughs> Hope you have some swap provisions, is all I'm saying. No, I'm Yeah, not. no, it loads everything into RAM, which I guess makes sense, because if you have, like, big crafting open world type of deal uh, with fancy graphics, you kind of want everything to be quickly accessible. So, yeah. It's uh it, it it runs much better than it used to, that's for damn sure. I didn't test much. Uh the save that I have, I'm already a little bit more uh into the late game. I still don't have the necessary equipment to fight the dragon, but uh the uh I I built a bit of a town and every now and then goblins come in there and I killed a few and the corpses they're animated and they act like they're alive, but they don't move and they don't deal any damage. Well, they did say, still hear the sounds. Um, like in the release notes for this, is like you, if you get a world, you probably want to regenerate it. Yeah, I'm nowhere yeah, near fighting the dragon. Funky. I'm like, hey, look, there's a fire. Uh, maybe I can chase the dragon. I just have to cra- craft the syringe and uh, <laughs> and and the spoon. <laughs> right. Uh, it's multiplayer, though, right? Maybe we could, uh, yes, yes. We, we, yeah. could we could work something out. I mean, it'll be devoid of penises, but uh, an attempt mm-hmm. might be made. Uh, we got anything else? No, I think that's it for uh, for headmills. Yep. Fine. Mm-hmm. Buy me some time while I do shit. <laughs> no, we're just gonna sit here in awkward silence until you get your shit in order, man. This is, this is a loveless <laughs> marriage. <laughs> Fuck all of you. That, um, that's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a pack of dicks. Um, Cause on that bombshell, let's cue the music. <laughs> That's the best I could do, man. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you like this dog shit, thanks for supporting it. Uh, you are awesome. You make it possible. We do, we're five five days a week. We are here for your viewing enjoyment. If you like train wrecks, if you want to get hold of me, I'm Vin Stone at Vin Stone on Twitter and uh, plus Vin Stone on Google Plus. I'm there. I'm hanging out. I get back to you. I'm, I might even click on things and reply on occasion. Yeah, uh, I'm Drone Spung. My social media accounts are also completely devoid of caveman penises, but you can still sit there and watch me gawk awkwardly at the internet at the Burning Fool on Twitter plus Jordan Spung on Google Plus. And I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me losing probably the uh, Here. half the figures I have in my hands playing around with my Dremel very, very soon because I'm not done with cutting holes into things, so some of these might be going. <laughs> please, please, please let him what? only have the middle finger left over. You, you, you <laughs> Listen, man, uh, for my viewing enjoyment, uh, you have my permission to stream anytime <laughs> this week if you're playing with a Dremel. See, we, 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 gotta, we gotta get like a squib rig set up that will just randomly fire blood capsules. Without Pedro's knowledge. Credit time. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. At the accounted for on Twitter. God damn. On Google no Google one Twitter. cares. <laughs> Maybe. Just a little bit. Pedro's like, oh, man. I care. I measure my worth as a human being based on numbers. Grow my numbers. Somebody grow Pedro's numbers. That sounds infinitely kinky. <laughs> Or dirty. A little bit of both, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Kinky always sounds dirty to me. Kinky sounds dirty. I don't know. Grow Pedro's numbers. There we go. <laughs> grow Pedro's or as you numbers. mentioned earlier, but stuff. It's a grow home. <laughs> Full numbers. Oh, oh, oh man, looks like hipsters from Vulcan shot ahead. Oh shit. Look, there's Frank, Frank holding the fuck <laughs> Frank does that, man. He's a wild bitch. L- listen, that that that's the surreal twist. Supreme Leader Snoke is going to re- be revealed in the new Star Wars movie to just be Frank. <laughs> half a Frank. That's this for the other half. <laughs> yeah, it's just but, top half a Frank. To be fair, we've never actually seen Frank's bottom, so <laughs> for all we know, he's actually just having a skeleton. Dynafire, ladies and gentlemen, we love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, dude.